Um, I want you to notice, Dr. Antonelli, how this um, provisional is very well fitted and um, is nicely contoured, and that actually ensures um, health of the soft tissues that we're going to be managing today. The key to success for um, an impression making and good tissue management is to have healthy tissues. And that is achieved by having a properly made provisional, uh, nicely polished, and also by being very careful not to traumatize the tissue when preparing the tooth for a crown or a fixed parcel denture. How important are the, the embrasure spaces, Dr. Lauer? They're extremely important because that's going to keep the papilla, the interdental papilla, healthy. And um, also it's going to ensure the patient's ability to clean uh, in the interproximal area, which is going to keep this, health, uh, this tissue healthy and uh, without inflammation. And what can a student expect to see um, a week later uh, when a poorly contoured crown has been cemented in a patient's mouth and now the student is ready to place the retraction cord into the gingival sulcus? Well, if the provisional is poorly contoured, you are going to see red tissues, inflammation, and bleeding. Even every time you touch the gingiva, you're going to get bleeding, which is very um, important when you make a, an impression because, as you know, most of our impression materials are either hydrophobic or slightly hydrophobic. So the presence of saliva and blood in this case is going to cause a void in our impression. So um, the health of the gingival tissues is, is extremely important to avoid bleeding during impression making. Nice. Okay. So now it's time for us to remove the provisional. And now we're exposing the prepared tooth. Look how nice this preparation is. I want you to notice, Dr. Antonelli, that we have different colors of cord. Okay? Each color um, shows a different thickness of cord. Now, how do you know what size cord you're going to use? For you to determine that, that's when the periodontal probe comes very handy because you're going to probe around the soft tissues around the preparation and depending on the size of the sulcus, you will decide what is going to be the size of the cord. So we're going to pretend here. Okay. So one of the first instruments that you will pick up prior to considering any tissue management procedure uh, is the periodontal probe. Yes. And you're looking for the depth of the sulcus and the health of the tissue. Exactly. So when doing this, you shouldn't get any bleeding if your tissues are healthy. I want you to notice, Dr. Antonelli, how you can see that the probing might be a little bit deeper on the interproximal area. Mm -hmm. Okay, you have more space for the cord in this area than you would have on the facial or the lingua. Do you see that? You yes. have more tissue there. So that is why we're going to start the core packing from the interproximal area. Okay? You may choose to start from the distal or the mesial. It's really your choice. Uh, in this case, because of the positioning of this type, and I'm going to start on the distal. Do you agree with that? Correct. <laughs> Now, are you using one or two cords in this case, Dr. Lara? In this case, I'm going to use the double cord technique. We have a thinner cord. Okay, in this case, it's a double zero. Look how skinny this is. They call that the compression cord, do they not? That is correct. That and is the compression cord. And what purpose does a compression cord serve? The compression cord is going to serve us some retraction in the vertical direction. Okay, it's going to give us vertical retraction. So if you, you can use your periodontal probe to, you are not to use the periodontal probe to pack the cord. That's why you have the cord packer. The periodontal probe, you may use it just to hold the cord in place, but not to pack. Because it's <laughs> pointed and can sever the gingival attachment. Because it's, exactly, because it's pointed and you may cause some damage to the gingival attachment.
Now as Dr. Lara packs cord, she exerts light pressure on the packing instrument in the direction from which she started. Exactly. And the purpose of exerting pressure in the direction from which you have started is to minimize the tendency to unravel the cord. Dr. Antonelli, something that is very important. You are not to continue the, with the next section of the cord until the first section that you start is completely packed. If you, if you find that you unpack the cord by accident in the area that you started, you must go back and then go ahead and continue. Otherwise, that's going to cause unpacking of the rest of the cord. In other words, you are wasting your time. Mm -hmm. Now this cord will be placed into the sulcus and will be left at the base of the sulcus. That is true and actually it's going to be hidden. You see Dr. Antonelli what I'm talking about? I just pre I'm trying to pretend that this area of the cord has been displaced and I'm trying to pack the rest of it. Mm -hmm. That's only causing this cord to come out even more. Yes. Okay. So, since I'm having trouble packing this area, I'm going to go back towards the direction where I started to get the rest of the cord in. I need to turn this a little bit. I don't know if you noticed, Dr. Antonelli, but do you see that the cord packer has two ends? Do you see the direction of it? And they're angled. They're angled, so that helps you um, direct the cord in the different surfaces of the teeth. For the purpose of this video, Dr. Antonelli, um, so we can illustrate better uh, how the cord is being packed, I have removed the premolar from the tympanum. Um, Dr. Antonelli, we're doing a double core technique. So now it's time for me to cut whatever's left from the first cord, from the, from the compression cord, because we're going to hide it completely inside the sulcus. This cord is going to stay in the sulcus during impression making. And I'm going to finish packing what's left of it. Okay. And here's your first cord packed, or compression cord packed. Completely hidden in the gingival sulcus. Yes. That is going to cause vertical retraction. Now what we want to achieve, Dr. Antonelli, is some horizontal retraction, or some width in the sulcus. That is why we're going to use a second cord that must be larger than the first cord we chose. We don't do it all the way around. If we put a larger cord first and a thinner cord after, the tissue is going to collapse over the thinner cord, so the thinner cord is not going to do anything for us. That's why you choose a skinniest cord, the skinniest, oh, that is why you choose a thinner cord first, like a double zero, and you put a thicker cord on top of that. In this case, I don't know if you remember, but our sulcus is pretty shallow, so I'm going to choose a zero cord. In deeper sulcus, you may choose a number one or even a number two cord. Also, I wanted to point out that leaving the first cord in the sulcus avoids bleeding and avoids... It acts as a... A sponge, in exactly. essence, absorbing the curvicular fluid. The curvicular fluid and keeping, helping to keep the environment dry for the hydrophobic impression materials that we use. Wonderful. So now it's time for the second cord. 
you'll notice that Dr. Lara begins packing or placing cord on the mesial proximal surface this time. Pressure is being exerted in an apical direction, but very light pressure is being used to place the cord. One of our aims is to avoid separation of the epithelial attachment, the connective tissue attachment. Now, you must see the second cord. You don't have to hide the second cord inside the cell because remember it's giving us some width. You already achieved vertical retraction with the compression cord that you packed. So it is okay to see portions of the second cord through the gingiva on top of the gingival tissue. You should be very careful and uh, don't leave the cord packed for more than 10 minutes at a time because it's going to cause irreversible retraction of the tissue. So we're going to get recession and that is very critical in the aesthetic area. Look how the second cord is being packed and you can see some of this cord on top of the gingiva. You don't need to hide this cord. I would like to show you that for you to remove the second cord, you must leave a few millimeters of cord exposed so you can have access to it prior to impression making. Now, Dr. Lara, assuming that uh, 10 minutes or less has gone by and we're ready to remove the cord, uh, I take it that slow removal is preferable so that we don't damage any of the curricular epithelium and induce bleeding. Yes, a slow removal and I would also recommend to wet the cord prior to removing it. When the cord is dry, it tends to tear the gingival tissue. Um, so you may use a little bit of water prior to removal of the cord or some of the hemostatic agent or the astringent um, if you may. Um, you can paint it up top with a micro brush and then proceed to the removal of the cord. Um, you notice Dr. Antonelli, I packed the cord with no astringent solution on it. That is optional. Um, some people believe that you get a better retraction by using an astringent such as hemodent or using a hemostatic agent such as Viscostat and that is really a personal preference of the operator. Uh, here in the clinic in Nova Southeastern University, we use an astringent that is called hemodent. And if you have a patient that is bleeding because there was trauma on the gingival tissue or because the patient may be using an um, anticoagulant medication, such as Plavix or Coumadin, and even if your provisional is very well contoured may cause bleeding, you can use other solutions such as Biscostat uh, to control that bleeding. But if the gingival tissue is healthy, you really don't need um, hemostatic agents. It's really a preference. However, it is important that the cord is slightly wet by the time of removal to avoid trauma to the tissues.
Dr. Lara, would you demonstrate how slowly you would remove this cord if you were ready to inject, say, the light body material around the tooth prior to placing the heavy body in the tray and making the final impression? Sure. We're going to pretend, because it's a type of that the cord is wet. You need to have moisture control. And to have moisture control, you may use cotton rolls on the facial and the lingual to the preparation, and also a saliva ejector to keep the preparation dry. So, posterior to uh, wetting the cord, you must suction the area and remove the cord with cotton pliers very slowly. How long does it take tissue to rebound completely to its former position, if you will, once the cord has been removed? If the compression cord is left inside, it takes longer than if you are only using a single cord technique. If you're using a single cord technique, you have 30 seconds to make your impression before the tissue rebounds. Uh, the first cord allows you for a little bit more time but it will not exceed a minute. Okay? So, so you need to work fast. Preferably with two people, one loading the tray while the other uh, exercises uh, good moisture control. Yes, the operator right in, immediately after removes the core starts injecting the material and when it is halfway of the preparation can ask the assistant to load the tray for you within 30 second window. Note that we leave the first cord in. You also have the choice to do a single cord technique. Even though uh, in Nova Eastern University we teach our students to use the double cord technique for the different advantages that we have explained in lecture. And one of them you mentioned before, which is the control of the bleeding and the control of the curricular fluid. If you choose to use a single core technique, I'm going to demonstrate it as follows. One other uh, item that comes to mind, Dr. Lara, do you recommend uh, anesthesia during cord packing? Um, yes, this is a procedure uh, that can be uncomfortable for some patients. Um, it's not necessarily painful, but it can be uncomfortable, so I would recommend the use of anesthesia. Infiltration of um, the interproximal papilla seems to be enough uh, for core packing. However, remember, Dr. Antonelli, some of these patients' teeth are vital, and they have been prepared. They have some sensitivity to air and water, which we will be using during impression making. So if it's a vital tooth, I would recommend um, an infralveolar block. And Dr. Antonelli, if you're using the double core technique, don't forget to remove the compression cord before you cement your provisional again. Oh, so prior to dismissing your patient, all cords must be removed. Yes. That is going to cause a lot of inflammation and your patient coming back with bleeding and pain. So don't forget, you must remove all cords. Uh, very important. Yeah. In order to remove the, co the cord, the compression cord that is being packed first, you must look for this cord inside the sulcus. Remember, we don't have a piece exposed. To do so, you're going to use very carefully your exploder and expose a piece of the cord and then proceed to remove the cord as shown before. Again, very slowly.
There you go. Excellent. Make sure at the end of your appointment you have a gauze, a two by two gauze with both cords that you use. So you can confirm that you remove all of them. This is very useful when you're doing multiple impressions of different teeth so you're sure you remove every single cord. These small cords are very easy to miss if you don't keep a count. Yes. Now I'm going to show the single cord technique. For the single cord technique, you must do probing of the sulcus. Again, to determine the size of the cord to be used. In this case, because you're using just one, you're going to pick a cord that is thicker than the ones we used before. In this case, I'm picking a number one cord. Okay, so I'm going to start on the interproximal. I hope, Dr. Antonelli, you can appreciate that this time the motion I'm using towards the beginning of the cord is going to produce um, sort of a, an accordion look to the cord. This is going to enhance tissue retraction with the single cord technique. So the way you pack it, you push lightly the cord towards the direction where you started packing and that is going to enlarge the gingival sulk. Here you can see Dr. Antonelli, the one cord technique is being packed that looks such an accordion. So this time you're gonna need a longer cord that you would on the double cord technique. T-shirt retraction is going to expose not only the finish line, but some unprepared tooth structure adjacent to the finish line. That is going to make the dye trimming so much easy for the laboratory technician or the student in this case. Wouldn't you say that? Yes, I would. It takes a lot of the guesswork out of um, dye trimming because when you look at the solid cast you'll not only be able to vi visualize your finish line quite easily but some of as you said the unprepared tooth structure apical to that finish line and uh, that enhances your the probability of producing an accurate dye and in turn um, well fitting margins for your final crown. You're absolutely right. So note that I, le I left a small piece of cord, about two to three millimeters of cord to make sure the cord is wet, disposed, so I can remove it prior to impression. And again, you need to make make before it's being removed. And after the removal, you must ensure that the preparation is dry, that no bleeding or saliva is present at the time of impression make. You must use a gentle motion and slowly remove the cord from the sulcus to avoid trauma to the tissue. And now we have between 30 and 45 seconds to proceed with the actual extrusion of light body impression material into the sulcus and on the prepared tooth and for the placement of the a custom tray.